people. But Nanette Sosa, they had dreamed about getting this 66 convertible for years, and they finally decide to splurge and go look at it. So it's my understanding, Nanette, that they post a, we want this car. And then the Craigslist person says, okay, I've got the car. Is that how it works? Or exactly. did he post initially? Uh, Bud Runyon is the person who posted. He's a Vietnam veteran, had been his lifelong dream to have a 66 Mustang. You're telling me she just went upstairs to go to the bathroom, and in that, what, 90 seconds, three ferrets break out of their cloth enclosure, which is not an enclosure at all. They're carnivores, they're weasels, and they attack the baby girl who is strapped into a car seat on the dining room floor. I mean, Stacy, I feel like I'm missing some of this picture. Something isn't fitting together with me. How much of this child's face has been disfigured, Stacy? At least 25%. Most of her nose is gone, Nancy. Her top lip was chewed off. And one side of her cheek was completely gone. Some adult leaves a loaded revolver in the home. And playing with that, the five-year-old shoots his baby brother dead. To Dr. Paul Nassif, facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon, Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. I don't understand what doctor in his right mind would encourage that beautiful medical student, literally she had it all, brains in beauty, to have lipo and why she died. Yeah, Nancy, I mean, that's, first of all, that's the wrong reason to do surgery. I mean, she even mentioned that she wanted to exercise to get rid of the weight. So liposuction is what the weight? last alternative. Wait a minute, doctor, what weight? Did you see her picture? Liz, can I she see looks the... I mean, she's gorgeous, Dr. Nassif. I mean, she's a beauty winner. She's a beauty queen. So you can't just throw out a it fact means you don't like, get to talk. Uh, okay, Norm, just try to get it out of your system so I can address Drew on this. Dr. Drew, you can't just throw out a fact unless you have backup for it. Now, do you have Such any ass. evidence that this man that just guns down his wife in front of his children was having withdrawal from some other drug. In the police report that you say is the factual matter that you've taken off the internet, there were empty pill bottles found in his room. And the fact right. is he may have, there's a common thing right now is that people are being dismissed from their medical care because they got, get carried no, away Drew, with their opiates and their benzodiazepines. They go into withdrawal. And in fact, they use pot to try to deal with the withdrawal from the, from the prescription meds. Chief James Berlin out of Roseville. Chief, I saw where you had stated that the more you investigated this case, the sicker it became. Why do you say that this baby suffered so horribly? Well, this child was left in a standard residential garage in the cold in the month of December. No love, no care, no blankets. Um, it had to have suffered greatly. It, it's just... That thought is, it's just awful. It just won't leave my mind. It won't leave any of our minds. And uh, I so. can't either. I can't get it out of my head, you know. The Unleash your lawyers, Jason Lamb and Danny Savalos. Jason Lamb, I, I don't quite understand what your defense is here. He's charged with attempted murder and intent to kill. And yeah. this call, are you ready for your abortion date, that comes from the victim. And we know they've been fighting. So that's what the defense needs to test. Now, again, like I don't in even the know what you're saying. What do you, uh, that's well, not that's the because you're not listening to me, worse. but I'm kind of used to that. Maybe no, that's because you don't make any sense. How does that help I, him? That he calls Nancy. her and says, you ready for your abortion date? How does that help well, him? Well, that rises I asked you for the it defense. to the intent to kill. There is such a thing as assault with a deadly weapon, which carries a lesser penalty. Of course, the vehicle is the weapon, and you take out the intent to kill, and it's a far more defensible case. You defend the law. You don't defend the act itself. But didn't you hear Pete Rios? Pete Rios, uh, still with us, who witnessed the whole thing. I didn't ask you this. You volunteered. You said he tried to kill her. Why did you say that, Pete Rios? Because he didn't, he didn't lose control. He went out with the car. If he, and if, that's if, if, he, if, if he missed, if you say you lost control, buddy, he had plenty of space to, to go the other way.
but he struck with the car to kill her, my man. So what you're saying is not true, man. He he tried to kill her. We all saw that, and you could you could say whatever you want, but he she meant to kill her. That's the that's the, that's the bottom line. They spent their lives helping other people, and now we learn they have been shot dead. And tonight we want answers. With me, Pastor Mark Walker from Mount Perrin North Church of God. Uh, Dr. Walker, thank you for being with us. What can you tell us about the Runyons? Well, you just said it all, Nancy. They are the most generous, giving, loving people anyone could ever meet. Um, and they uh, carried, uh, as you said, food, clothes, even school supplies, uh, all kinds of items to help meet needs um, in the Appalachian area and around some of the poorest areas in Atlanta and Marietta. You're seeing a chase of up to 100 miles an hour. Pedestrians, traffic lights. Here's the beginning. Here's the beginning. She is now somehow managing to get out of the cop car. She's, she hit her, there she is hitting her own car, ramming it. That's her pushing her car forward with her family in the car. Now, now she's taking off. This is the getaway. Now you see yourself, there you go, turning curves, 100 miles an hour through red lights, stop signs, oncoming traffic. Ashley, um, I'm very often, very often alone taking care of my twins. And mm -hmm. when you're We've got your door closed, all the windows are locked, doors locked, the alarm's on. And then you hear a man's voice watching you, watching you change the baby girl's diapers. What happened? Oh man, it was terrifying. I just thought it was a normal Monday morning. And um, it, often it's scary, you know, being in homes by yourself and whenever it's not your ho own home. And after breakfast, we just went in and did a routine diaper change. And here's this strange voice talking from inside the room somewhere. The intro virus. Michael, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. This is so important, Michael. Tell us what happened. Uh, Bailey woke up in October with back pain and a headache and neck pain. I thought she had the vir or had the flu virus, so I kept us all home. And very quickly, Bailey, myself, and her brother and sister got it. And because her sister is seven months old, or four months old at the time, I thought we needed to go to the doctor. And so we did, and they checked her out. Within 24 hours, she had a really bad respiratory infection. Her doctor said, Michael, I don't want to scare you, but I think she has the enterovirus. 